It's Eleanor Pryor, and I am here with Sean Hansen. And Sean, Hi, everyone. Sean Hansen is the indie book marketer, and she has been earning money writing since 2006. And in 2010, she left a 10 year career as a college English professor to pursue her dream of writing and marketing full time. And she's never been happier. Sean has published over a thousand stories in magazines such as Tweet the Meat, Byline Magazine, 7x20, Common Ties, and the Anthro Anthology 140 and Counting. In 2012, she released her first self published Kindle book, Scribbled Stories, Volume 1. And Sean recently launched Brainy Games Books, which is dedicated to bringing entertaining and engaging kid kids reading into the 21st century by producing ebooks designed and specifically for electronic reading devices. As the indie book marketer, Sean's goal is to help writers turn their passion for writing into profit. She believes each of us has more books in us <laughs> and more stories and articles inside us than we think we do. And she often reminds authors that there's a tremendous amount of money to be made doing what they love. So I'd like to say welcome to Sean for joining us for the Kindle Summit. Hey, thanks, Eleanor. It's a pleasure to be here. And uh, I'll apologize in advance. Uh, the two of us tried to figure out why why my uh, office looks so dark, and we can't. So this is the late night version of the Kindle Experts panel. I guess we'll call it that. What do you say? Sounds good to me. <laughs> Before I totally turn it over to you, the inquiring minds in the audience for the Kindle Summit have three questions that they would like to know the answers to from. And the first question is, for would-be Kindle authors, which question, in your opinion, would be the one they would benefit most from asking you? Well, I'd have to say the most important question is to determine the purpose for the Kindle book being published. Ask yourself, what is my purpose for publishing this book? There are so many authors who forget to ask this question. Uh, and it has to be asked every time you publish. The answer changes everything about the process from the idea that you have to the writing of it to the manuscript length, editing, even marketing. There are tons of reasons to publish, Eleanor, but, and they include things like money or establishing expertise. You can do it for publicity, for fun, even for vanity. But knowing the why, the reason behind each book, is going to make the difference between having a successful book and not. It's either a small business or a hobby and I like to train authors to think about every book as one of those two things. Hobby books we publish for fun. There's nothing wrong with that. We might even publish them for vanity and that's okay too. We leave a footprint all over the world and that's perfectly okay. Hobby books don't need a big budget. They don't need much marketing. But if you plan to publish more than a hobby book it's really important you establish that up front so that you know you have a plan and a book budget and you're ready to go. So ask yourself what your purpose is for publishing your Kindle book. Great. Okay. And then what is your perspective and strategy for success with Kindle? Oh, it's just a crapshoot, right? You throw it up there and that's all you have to do. Everybody loves a Kindle book. Now, I, again, I always know the reason I'm publishing a particular book and I move forward from that with a goal-appropriate plan. A lot of us want to earn, my, uh, earn money with our writing, and there's nothing wrong with that. I think that's a great attitude to go into. The key is creating a solid backlist, and that's really important. And a backlist is multiple books. This is really true with new authors and people who don't have a well-established following. Having that backlist will make all of the difference. And the truth is, very few people can achieve success with just one or two Kindle books, but anybody with stories to tell or messages to share or a passion for writing can be successful if he or she is willing to produce multiple Kindle books and that's really my strategy for success. Great and then my last question for you is what networking resources <laughs> networking resources <laughs> you cultivate to achieve success with Kindle? Um, uh, you know, I use the normal ones, Eleanor. I use my list, I use social media, my website, my blog, but I've added two things to the mix that not a lot of people think of and I think they're pretty important. 
The first one is being an active member of several of my local writing groups. And during the last seven years, in addition to just going to the meetings and participating, I've also served as a board member and as a newsletter editor. And I don't say that out of vanity. I say that because those engaging activities make me more visible to the other people in the group and it gives me a level of expertise. So that's one thing. The second is appearing and speaking in as many writing related and author related events as possible. Those things increase your visibility, your perceived expertise, and they lead to more sales. So basically you could actually even um, create a meetup group in your area if there's not a meetup group around writing self-publishing. Oh, absolutely. And if there isn't one in your area, as you and I both know, we learned about some meetup groups when we were in Las Vegas. It's a fabulous tool. And I would suggest for people who maybe don't want to be part of a larger uh, writer's group, a meetup might even be a better way to go until you feel more comfortable. Great. Okay. Well, thanks for indulging me with my three questions. Now I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to you. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to mute myself in case there's any noise in the background, which is a courtesy thing that anybody on a Hangout should do. So now you just got a, a Hangout 101 tip from me. But anyways, I'm going to go ahead and hand it over to you now. Thanks, Eleanor. All right, everybody. I am going to introduce you to Book Cover Junction. And I'm going to set up my screen sharing so that we can go ahead and take a look at some things about book covers. Now, I don't think I have to convince anyone on this call how important a fantastic book cover is. That's the first thing people see when they're shopping for your books. And it's one of the most difficult elements of any self-publishing endeavor is getting the right book cover. So let's talk a little bit about three things. The first is I want to review with you your book cover options and these include the do-it-yourself option, templates, hiring a professional, buying a publishing package. Once we talk about those things what I want to do is introduce you to the specifics of book cover junction and then along the way I want to share some Kindle cover tips and tricks with you. So even if you're doing your own covers and you're perfectly comfortable I think you'll find that I have a couple of cool tips and tricks that you can add to your arsenal that'll make this whole presentation worthwhile. So let's talk first about the do-it-yourself cover. Here are the pros and the cons. It's inexpensive to do it yourself. No one argues that. But it's time consuming. The software is costly. There's a steep learning curve. If you've ever done your own cover, you know that this can be very difficult. The submission specifications vary by distributor and even though we're talking about Kindle here specifically, if you want to then take your ebook and put it onto another platform, you may find the do-it-yourself cover that worked on the Kindle platform won't work elsewhere. And do-it-yourself covers can often kill sales. There's nothing worse than that. Now here's a comparison. On the left is a cover that a good friend of mine, I've been working with Alton for several years, he's in his 80s, he's published over 50 Kindle books and this is one of the first books he published and this cover was created by uh, his son and with some help from Alton. On the left, the Publish It Yourself cover. Now, when I started working with Alton, one of the first things we did was review his cover to see if we could increase sales. The cover on the right is an example of something you would see at Book Cover Junction that you would have as part of your membership. When Alton switched from the cover on the left to the cover on the right, his sales increased instantaneously. Starting the next day, they went up. They've increased by 68%. So that's the difference between doing it yourself and having someone who is a professional do it for you. Now the next thing that most people come across our templates. And those of you out in the audience, and Eleanor, I'm watching you, raise your hand if you use a template. Put that hand up. I know you have. We all have. So there are some great things about templates. They're fairly inexpensive. Uh, generally, your templates have a solid design element to them. And, you know, they're quick and easy. Nothing wrong with that. But here's where it gets difficult. The options tend to be limited. There's a lack of originality. When you buy into a template cover, 
site or you get a set of templates, obviously they're rarely updated. And once again, you have that size issue. Ebook covers vary from distributor to distributor, so not every template is suited for every major platform. You may get templates that don't work well for the Kindle ebook. And it's often not just what you need. Now I want to show you something really interesting about templates. On the left is a book cover created by a template, and on the right again is the cover that Alton ended up using for his book. And I often get people who go, well, you know, I kind of like that cover on the left, and that's okay. It's sort of a trick question. I want you to like that cover on the left. Here's, what's happen here's what happens if you go to Amazon and you do a quick search on the term internet marketing. Look at all of these covers with just the phrase internet marketing. Now, this was a quick search I did a few days ago and I only went a couple of pages into the search results and as you can see there are a whole lot of people using this particular template. You'll notice that my book cover on the left added some images but the covers on the right don't even do that. One of the reasons they probably don't is that this particular template creator is very difficult to work with when it comes to adding layers or additional content to the prefabricated template. So when you go to a template service, you're liable to find that you create a book, you slap that cover on, and then somebody does a search and your book is next to another book that looks very much like it, and you don't want that. Your book's not going to stand out that way, and in fact, if you see this on a page, you start to wonder whether or not this is a legitimate group of actual books with good content. I, I wouldn't want my cover to look like everybody else's. Now, at Book Cover Junction, you'll see that each of the covers comes with four options. And the options are designed to be different from each other. They're obviously similar because they're, they're set to a particular idea. In this case, this is a book cover that would be appropriate for things like um, new parenting, parenting, getting ready for pregnancy. It could be a baby shower. Yeah, baby gender reveal. Sorry, I popped yeah, in here. There you go. Yeah, exactly. Your book, Baby Gender Reveal. You know, you could use this if you were throwing a baby shower. It could be a card that you gave to somebody saying congratulations. There's a variety of things you can do. And again, each of the packs comes with four different designs. This is all part of it. Now you'll notice again the central theme here, this picture, remains the same. But the background color, the font, all of these things change. And unlike the template, what you can do with one of these designs is take that picture, swap it out. This could just as easily be a book about knitting or about scuba diving or about picnic. Any kind of image you put in the center will change up what the cover relates to the reader. And then finally, just so that you can get a sense of the variety of content, there are fiction books, nonfiction books, books that you can, or covers that you can use for both. They're very much cross-platform. And the limit to what you can do with these is really your imagination. This particular cover, if you look on the left, you have a background color. If you really like that, cover, that color and you want to do a book about cooking, you could swap out that photograph and have a unique cover. It's very easy to do and by the way I'm going to show you how to do this without having any kind of fancy software so if you've got the idea in the back of your head that's great but I don't know how to do graphics let me just tell you we're going to fix that you're going to be amazed. Now one of the other things you can do is hire a professional. If you do this it generally gets done very well. There's a minimal time investment for you and the platform standards are generally solved. Now you'll notice I have an asterisk next to both of those. And what that means is that depends, okay? It's a minimal time investment for you, presuming you have a professional. If you don't know somebody, you have to get recommendations or seek someone out, and that can be a time suck hole. And then the platform standard should be solved, but what if your professional doesn't know that the dimensions on, say, a Kindle ebook differ from those for the Barnes & Noble Nook? That can be a problem. Now, hiring a professional is costly, and one of the other cons is that many pros themselves use templates. So you try and stay away from templates, you hire a professional, you pay three times as month, much and you end up with a template cover. If you want multiple sizes, you generally have to pay extra. The cool thing about the images at Book Cover Junction, all of them are pre-sized to work 
right now on the Kindle. You just upload them and they're ready to go. If you want to resize them for the other major platforms like Barnes & Noble or iTunes or Kobo, they are created so that the ratio of height to width is appropriate. You size them down and there's no distortion. You don't lose any clarity. And it doesn't cost you any more because you download these images, they're yours, and you just resize. Also when you hire a professional, because print book covers are different from ebook covers, you're generally out of luck if you want to turn that ebook into a print book. You often don't have the right art to do that. It does take different artwork. And even with all of that, hiring a pro, the results can be disappointing. And again, out in the audience, raise your hand if you've had a disappointing professional, yeah, uh-huh, do a cover. I know I have, and it's one of the reasons I started doing my own design work. Now the final thing you can do is get a publishing package, and a lot of people go for this. This is right for some people. It's a one-stop solution. You get interior design, you get cover design, you often get marketing, you often, often get copies. Uh, even if you're doing an ebook, you can get print copies. There's a minimal time investment for you, and again, the caveat to that is assuming you know a good publisher. You have to do your homework, and that can be time-consuming. The platform standards are solved, but it could only be for the publisher in question. If you go through publisher A and you want to distribute through publisher B, that's not always possible. So keep that in mind. Now, I think we all know that a publishing package, to start off the, the list of cons, it's the most costly option. And you might not just get just what you want. Often with publishing packages, you get three, three choices. They'll work with your overall design concept and say you can choose A, B, or C. And none of them might be exactly what you want, but you have to pick one. Again, these packages are often outsourced to pros who turn around and do what? Use templates. And then, once again, you're out of luck if you want to use this for print. If you get an ebook publishing package, it generally does not include what you need for print book covers. So, those are the complications you run into when you're dealing with book covers. The do it yourself, working with templates, hiring a pro, or working with a publishing package. Now, I'm an author, I write a lot of books, I work with hundreds of authors, and this is my website. It's Book Cover Junction. And the way it started, quite frankly, was when I design the ebook covers for authors, I give them three to four design choices, and they'll pick one. And nine times out of ten, the authors choose a cover that they like, but I prefer something else. And I hated having these wayward children that I had created languishing in files on my hard drive. It, it felt so wrong to hide them away, and I thought, there's got to be something I can do to make use of these covers and to help indie authors really be able to get great covers at reasonable prices, and poof, book cover junction. Now, one of the really cool things about Book Cover Junction, all of this stuff is original. I create every single design you see myself. They're exclusive to Book Cover Junction. They're not being sold anyplace else. They aren't PLR. You get them, you see them, they're only there. As I said, each book cover comes with four customizable designs, and I deliver them in two ways. Now, this is going to get a little bit graphic geeky, so hang on. I deliver them as layered PSD files, and that means if you use Photoshop or Photoshop Elements or Adobe Illustrator, you will be able to man manipulate every single layer. I often get asked, will some of the online tools do this? The answer to that is no. Most of the free online tools don't recognize layers as actual images but as text. But if you use any of the major softwares, Photoshop, Photoshop Elements, Adobe, you'll be able to manipulate these designs. If you don't, I also give you JPEGs. And with those JPEGs, you can go to a free source I'm going to show you and manipulate the images yourself. But there's something even better. Included with your membership, if you just don't want to do any work, raise your hand if you don't want to do any work, you just put in a customization request. You say, I want this book cover and you give me the title and I want it in option number two, here's the title, here's my author's name. You fill out that form, you send it in, within about 24 to 48 hours, I do the work for you, no extra fee. So you can be totally lazy and get this stuff done. 
Now, we have to go over the cons, but I can't think of any. Yeah, that was time to laugh. So these are original ebook covers at a fraction of the cost at Book Cover Junction. And I'm going to go ahead and give you this special webinar pricing link before I go into a demo. So if you want to write this down, the link to get special pricing is http colon slash slash Eleanor E L E A N O R loves L U V S dot com forward slash Sean. You want to save big and lock in the prices now. I'll show you in just a minute, but you're going to save on the professional level uh, membership. And then there's also an upgrade. Now, I've noticed on my slide that I've got a terrible error, and we want to fix this for the film, don't we? So, Eleanor, hang tight. There, look, the magic of the internet. We have the correct URL now. Isn't for all that of wonderful? You it is. You can totally correct your mistake live. That's why I love them. They're so awesome. It's great. And, you know, it's always good to have the wherewithal not to panic and to go, hey, I can type that in. It's not a big deal. <laughs> All right, so enough talk about what this site does or doesn't do. Let me switch over to the actual website here and, and do some demo. Over, I have some questions, too. Oh, absolutely. In my mind. So... Like the ebook covers, it really does totally sell, kill the sell if it's not um, an appealing cover, if it looks like it's a homemade cover. Oh, yeah. It, so it's one of the really bad things about self publishing is if you don't have good interior formatting, it will scream, done in my home. And if you don't have a nice cover, it's going to do the same thing. And we all know there's nothing wrong with self publishing, it doesn't have the same negative uh, kind of thoughts surrounding it as it did a few years ago but with all of the books out there I mean we're all hungry for Kindle content but we all shop it's I buy my wine this way I, I look at labels <laughs> I, I get my books the same way if I don't know the author I shop by cover right yeah what's what's on the cover especially the wine bottle with me I was getting a bottle of wine the other night and I was like oh do I want a mall back and I was reading the back of it and I was like oh yeah that's what I got. But I totally went off on another tangent because you talked about wine for a moment. My <laughs> other question I have for you, because I am new to Kindle myself, like I said, um, I may have not said earlier, but I have one book that I've published and I have another one that I've kind of got there. But um, just for my benefit, I'm sure everybody else knows this, I just don't know. What is an indie author? Oh, an independent author, and you know what, this definition is going to vary based on who you talk to. Uh, strictly speaking, it's somebody who does everything on his or her own. That's the old school version, from story creation all the way through publication, which almost makes it sound like you're running a printing press in your house. I think the more common uh, indie author definition or independent author is the individual who controls the content, the look, and the distribution of the actual book that's being produced. In other words, if you go through Amazon, they're distributing, but you're choosing how they distribute your book. You can go through KDP, you can go KDP Select, you can go CreateSpace. Here, pretty quick, you're going to be able to use a Kindle Matchbook. So if you're, <coughs> oh my goodness, excuse me. <coughs> If you're creating your own work or in charge of hiring it out, I believe you're an independent author. In other words, you're footing the bill and you're bringing in the royalties. The traditional publisher pays you a certain percentage or a royalty and then pays you in addition if you sell beyond that. Okay, so basically it means, <laughs> for me, <laughs> an independent author that's pretty much publishing and doing all the steps and marketing and all that good stuff, if I understood Correct. you. Correct. Cool. Okay, and now you opened up another can of worms, and I promise this will be my last question. I love <laughs> questions. <laughs> what do you mean, Kindle Matchbook? <laughs> oh, so you haven't heard yet. This is super exciting. Uh, Amazon just released, I think it was last week, they will be opening up what's called Kindle Matchbook on October 1st, and what that means is 
If you have a book on Kindle, and this is for readers and authors, if you sell a book through CreateSpace, you can sell the ebook at a lesser rate, 99 cents to, I think it's 299. And they think, and I think, it's going to increase physical book sales, which will also then increase ebook sales. Imagine if you didn't want to have to choose between having a physical copy in your hand or an ebook. How many times has that happened that you've bought both? I know I have. Yeah. I, and you're, I wanted that the other day. <laughs> yeah, you're paying ridiculous fees for the two layouts. And with Matchbook, what you can do is if you own the physical book, they will then give you the matching ebook at a discount. And the, the prices are regulated. I believe the high end is $2.99. And here's what's really exciting. Free is also an option for the ebook. So while I don't know yet what the parameters are going to be, bells and whistles went off for me in that there are times you want to give your ebook away for free. And in order to do that through Amazon, you have to be part of KDP Select. Mm -hmm. And you're limited on the numbers of days. So imagine if you had a CreateSpace version that if a person bought for, say, $12.95, they'd get the ebook version for free. That's incentive. I oh, really, wow. really like that. Yeah. So the thing from the reader's point of view that's very cool, because we all know we authors are voracious readers. If you bought a book going back to, I believe it's 1998, if you bought a book from Amazon and it's part of Kindle Matchbook and there's an ebook available now, you can pick up that ebook at the discount. Oh, that's great. No, because see, I wanted a book the other day, but I also wanted it to be able to hold it in my hand because it was a recipe book for juices. So I didn't want to have to pay for both of them, but now that'll be awesome because then I'll have that opportunity. Because, you know, I don't want the iPad <laughs> to get full of juice when I was juicing. Exactly. Okay. <sighs> Cool beans. Okay, so that was the end of my questions. Now go. I'm like looking forward to hearing this. Uh, you know, this tool that you were talking about earlier when I diverted you. Uh huh. So this is again. This is just an overview of the covers that are on the homepage of Book Cover Junction. These are the latest book covers. These change when you reload the page. I just added this cover here, uh, Magic Moon today, and I added Rainy Day Dog today. And where's the other one? I added a third one today. Oh, right up here, Stonehouse at the top in the middle. So when you're a member of Book Cover Junction, and I'll tell you right now, this is the special you're going to be getting. The normal monthly membership basic level is $9.97. And I know uh, it's nice and big on my screen, but I know on the screencast this is a little tough to read. You get instant access, unlimited basic level downloads, you get to have two customization requests a month, so I do the work for you twice a month if you choose. There's new content for basic level members added each week, and these are for personal use. So that's $9.97 a month. The advanced level membership is $19.97, and again, you get instant access. These are unlimited basic downloads plus, so everything in the basic level, plus advanced downloads, eight customization requests a month, new content each week, and personal use. And the special price is on the pro level membership. And the reason this one's cool is that this is for personal and client use. So you get to use them for yourself. And if you are helping other authors like I am and like many of us are, this is also for client work. You get access to everything on the site, unlimited downloads, daily customization requests. So you and I can become best friends. <laughs> And one of the neat things about the pro level monthly membership is you get the suggestion box. So let's say you have a project coming up and you know you're going to release a book about vegetarian cooking. And you look at Book Cover Junction and you say, hey, I don't see anything that fits my bill. You fill out the suggestion box and magically within a week or so it appears. Now, I use that example specifically to show you this cover here on the left, Hands Down Healthy, came from a suggestion box just like that. One of my clients was getting ready to release a book on vegetarian eating, so I created this option uh, as well as several others that aren't showing up on the homepage. So the suggestion box is kind of cool. 
question. I wanted to, before people started tuning out and going, yeah, how much is it? There you go. There you have it. We can talk about it later. Now let's do some exciting stuff because I know you want to see this tool I talked about to manipulate these images, right? Right. Before you do that, though, yeah. I go back down to the to the price area because my my WordPress brain came on. Oh sure. <laughs> With the whole, so it's like it's almost like a plugin to me because you can buy a single use license of a WordPress plugin for your site, or you can buy the developers and have yeah. this whole developer license. Put it wherever you need for your clients. And the fact that they have access to you, and also it's almost kind of like, um, to me, it's like being able to call up my my coach if I had a coach, <laughs> 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 like if it was my I am coach or my book author coach or a coach on on book covers. Basically, that's what they're, they're getting with you is a developer's license from my mind, and also somewhat coaching because you'll be able to give them. Am I am I reaching or or kind of feedback on or accept you know the suggestion box? Well, the suggestion box is more about um, telling me what you need, and these aren't custom covers. Okay. Those I do; they're more expensive. But I try and satisfy whatever need a person has. And if somebody throws into the suggestion box, um, I need. Uh, a book cover about vegetarian eating and it'd be great if you could do some sushi rolls and some uh, salad plates and things like that. I generally do at least three cover styles and there's nothing saying you can't come back and ask for others. Now I don't tweak it to the extent that you're getting a custom cover but I get pretty doggone close and I have not yet had a person who's filled out a suggestion box form come back and fill it out again they've downloaded something and used it. So we tend to, there's a big box that you can tell me what it is you need. You can, you can talk about colors, you can talk about styles, and I can generally uh, nail something that will work for you. Now in terms of the plug-in uh, kind of comparison you made, I see where you're getting because yes, I do the same thing. I, I plugins like that for my WordPress sites and my WordPress clients. Uh, the one thing you can't do with any of these covers is just take them and put them onto another site like they were PLR, but you're completely free at the pro level to do any kind of book covers for yourself or any kind of a client. You just can't resell my designs as they are. That's really the only limitation. And at the lower levels, uh, they're for personal use, which is why those are lower levels. Mm -hmm. Oops, I had myself muted. Sorry. And then my my uh, my last question in regards to this, and then we can move on, is say somebody did want to have more. Um, <laughs> why am I losing my thought here? Want to have more hands on on with you, like for customization. How would that work? I actually through the indie book marketer I work with clients uh, specifically independent authors all the time I create websites for them I do book covers for them I format do interior so if you're uh, interested in that you can just shoot me an email it's sean.hanson at indiebookmarketer.com and I'm happy to talk to you about what you need okay perfect alright so now I'm gonna leave you alone let you go on <laughs> I don't believe you for a minute, and you know what? You're free to interrupt me any old time. Uh, it is so, that's the beauty of the Hangout. <laughs> it is. It's great. So what I do want to do is I want to show you what it looks like when you log into your membership area and get these downloads. Because the way this starts, you obviously saw the home page, and you can check back often at the home page to see what's new, but it's a lot easier once you're a member to simply log into your account and now this is showing all of the content because I'm logged in as an administrator. There are also some monthly freebie packs that anybody can sign up for. I have these laid out as e-covers and we haven't talked about this but your membership also includes pinnable graphics so things you can use on Pinterest and Facebook as well as website graphics. At the pro level you also get uh, covers for Facebook and Twitter and this is kind of exciting at the end of the month and this goes with matchbook at the end of the month pro level members are going to have access to 
matching create space covers for some of the designs. So a little different from the Kindle. But you'll notice that each of these is a link. And so when you want to download, and again, these are unlimited downloads, so there's really no need to go in and spend 14 hours downloading all the content. You can find a cover as you need it, download it. I don't remove the content, so it's not as if, ooh, I have to download everything today or Sean's going to take it off. I don't. I just leave it there. It's there for you when you need it. You download the package, and I, I won't do that live, and when you open it up, I will show you this. Uh, let me pull one of my covers, and we'll play with, let's play with this group here. And I'm going to open this up, and then hopefully I can share this with you. Let me go back to my screen and see if I can share what I'm looking at. Oh, yeah, I can. It's probably going to be very small. Oh, that's not too bad. So when you download one of these packs, the e-cover packs, they're zipped files, and what's inside are four designs in two file types. Again, the layered PSD files and then your JPEG files. So a layered PSD has all of the information in it. In other words, you have your title, you have your author's name, you have any kind of design that's there. The JPEG removes the text because that's what you have to customize. And if you don't have a fancy software, you need to be able to start with a clean background. So let's take this particular cover, and I'm going to put it on my desktop so I can find it very quickly. And I'm going to take you to a site that, again, I told you some of this stuff is worth taking notes on. How many of you have heard of PicMonkey? P-I-C, like picture. Yeah, and monkey, like the guy with the banana. So here I am at PicMonkey, and I've signed into my account. PicMonkey is free. I have the upgraded membership that I think was less than 50 bucks for a year. It was like 30 bucks. I love my PicMonkey. I lied to you. I didn't realize it was good PicMonkey. <laughs> See? It's been, PicMonkey has been under your nose and you didn't even know the fun stuff you could do with it. So when you get these covers, so here's my JPEG, and I'm just going to drag it over here to PicMonkey, and it's going to open it up. Now, here's my cover, and this is sized to Kindle. This is ready for upload at the optimized size for Kindle, which, by the way, if you're taking notes, the optimum size for a Kindle ebook cover is 1,563 pixels wide, by 2,500 pixels tall. And if you use those dimensions, they will reformat to the other major platforms like Barnes & Noble, iTunes, and Kobo without any distortion, which is really a cool thing. So I go over here to the little text button, and I'm going to just grab some text here, type it in, uh, D makeovers, I like to center my text. And if you haven't used PicMonkey before, get yourself. It's just crazy. It's absolutely crazy. And then I just take my font up here the way I want it. And we need another text box for my author. You just became an author, Eleanor. Poof! Cool beans, that works for me. Woo! Yes, Pig Monkey is amazing. There's so many. I, I use it for all my um, blog post images. Yeah, they're fantastic. I just, I love this place. Now, that's really all I have to do. This has basically given me the design. I have changed. I actually didn't change the title, but we can put, uh, let's see. Weekend, we'll call it Weekend Paint. There's, there's a god-awful title for you. <laughs> there's your title, there's your author name, and that's what you can do at PicMonkey. Now, if you don't like the image in the middle, many of the covers will allow you to change that image. This is going to be, I'm going to do this on the fly here, and go into... 
Uh, you won't be able to see what I'm doing in the background here, but I'm just going for some other photos that I have, and I'm looking for something that's square. And I'll actually, what would probably be better is if I show you this in Photoshop, because that's really where this is designed to be used. But you can, in PicMonkey, put in new photos and play around with this stuff even more. Now, if you want to switch out images and things like that in this kind of a design, my suggestion would be use a suggestion box. You know, it's part of your membership, whatever level you sign up for. Give me the title of the cover that you want. Give me a link to the image you want me to use. And if it will fit on the cover and I can make it work, I'll put your image in for you. Okay? So that's one way you can use PicMonkey to play around with these covers. Now let me open up Photoshop and show you what it's like to create covers from what's available at Book Cover Junction uh, with the software. And by the way, if you use uh, graphic software, you probably use Photoshop. I actually think Photoshop is overkill for most of what I do. I use Photoshop when I create print covers because it's a different color scheme that's needed and Photoshop Elements doesn't have it. But when I'm just doing ebook covers, and I don't mean just like they're less than, uh, when I'm doing an ebook cover, which is going to be visible on the web, so it's a different category of clarity and design. I'm not using it for print, although the covers at Book Cover Junction are 300 dots per inch, and now I'm getting graphic geeky again. But at 300 dots per inch, they will print in high quality, and you don't have to worry about that. They won't display at that quality on the web because the web hasn't caught up to that yet. But what you can do is just use something like Photoshop Elements, which is much less expensive. So let's open up uh, another cover here, and we'll play around with some of the options. Now, again, what you would do is you'd log into your account, and you would download a zip folder containing your PNG files and your PSD files. If you want to, I'm sorry, your PSD files and your JPEGs. And if you want to use your own software, you would go right for these layered PSD files. And I opened up the wrong file, which is bound to happen when you're trying to talk and click, right? Isn't that the magic yeah, of the internet? I, I don't type well and talk at the same time. <laughs> myself. That's okay. <laughs> yeah, you know, it happens. <laughs> All right, so let's open this layered file, and you'll also get a clearer understanding of what I mean by layered files. Uh, for those of you who have worked with graphic software, and I, when I say layered files, that makes sense. If you haven't worked with layered files before, then what you're seeing here on the right hand side are in fact each of the layers of text and imagery and the easiest way for me to show you is to turn them off so here's a layer that talks about the book title here's the optional subtitle layer if I go down a little farther there's the author's name I can literally take the background out of here so if for example you would rather have a solid color image background you simply add a color layer and pour it in, put it behind everyone, poof, new book cover, just that quickly. So each of these elements can be manipulated. And what that means is not only can I do something like, uh, we'll call this book Online Marketing Freedom, And I'll probably want to go to another line. We'll make this freedom. We'll make this online marketing. You have to play with the fonts a little bit. Obviously, that font's too big. That's all right. We'll just make it a little small. And move freedom up a bit. And uh, how do you feel, Eleanor? You want to be author again? Sure. I'll, I'll accept that. <laughs> there you go. 
And again, these are already sized for Kindle, so you can go ahead and just upload this. Now, if you go, well, I don't like this couple, that's okay. You can find another image. And I'm going to show you, this is, this is where it starts to get really kind of fun because we now have an online marketing book, right? Let's turn this into a hobby book. For example, how about we turn this into a book about snorkeling? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this picture and I'm going to place it into this cover. And it's going to, this image is going to wipe out the cover here for a second, so bear with me. We'll bring these kids down and reduce it a little more. And I want them in front of my couple. You guys, this is stuff you can do. This is not, what I'm doing here is not that tough. So now, I've got a book uh, cover that looks a little bit more about snorkeling. Now this isn't blending really well, so I'll just do a little parlor trick here. I'm going to put a stroke, which is a fancy term for frame, around these kids. And make it a little bigger. And what this is going to do is it's going to give me a nice barrier. And I can even make them a little bit bigger. Well, I don't want to do that. Now I've distorted them. We don't want strange looking children. Now I don't think these kids look much like they're going to be marketing. So we need to change the title. We'll call this uh, Snorkeling uh, for Kids. Got to pick the right layer. And now I have a new book cover. So we went from a marketing book to a snorkeling book. And if I throw food in the middle there, I've got a cookbook. If I throw an image of uh, crocheting, I've got a crocheting book. But it gets even better because, again, there are four different designs within each of these cover packs. And if I go back to this particular cover pack, uh, where is my, whoops. If I go back to my do-it-yourself makeovers, now this was online marketing freedom. So let's grab online marketing freedom. I open this up, and I want another cover. And this time, I'm just going to grab looking for a blue background. I know there's a blue background in this and I really like the blue background. So I just want the JPEG. I'm going to open this up and I'm not going to worry about this couple because they're going to be covered. I mean I can go in and take them out but for purposes of demonstration I'm going to copy this image and now I'm going to put it in the background of what we just did. And here's what happens. We go from the sky and the sand in the background to a nice blue background. This is the reason that you're not going to get trapped with a template-like cover when you load your book to Amazon. What I showed you at the beginning with those red and black covers that looked identical to one another, it can't happen with Book Cover Junction. You'd literally have to pick the exact same style as someone else, the same color scheme, the same images, and be in the same category and the chances of that happening are so very slim uh, I just don't see that you're going to get a lot of repeat you can even again you can take out the backgrounds and we'll put the color splash back in and poof now we've got a whole new look yeah and, and like you were saying earlier Photoshop there's it, it, the basic stuff that you're using now with it is easy it's not um, not something that anybody can't pick up because actually I'm saying I know how to do it. <laughs> this is what I'm trying to say. And um, once you get the hang of it, it, it is. It's, it's a lot of fun going in and, and actually creating things and actually putting your personality into them. And you've already got the blueprint right here basically. Yeah, and, and again, I mean, you'll find yourself, and, and this is one of the things I want to warn you, don't get so caught up in creating your covers that you forget to write your books. <laughs> but this will give you a nice tool to put the finishing touch on the book that you've worked so hard to create.
uh, there's just there's nothing really like having the ability to go through and find really good covers that you know are going to be first of all designed the right way for the Kindle platform and that you have support and you can get uh, your suggestions met and if you don't feel like doing the work whether your graphics challenge I like to say graphics challenge whether or not your graphics challenge or maybe you're just too busy that's the whole point of being a member I'm doing this work that I love I mean this is a great outlet for me and like I said I got to give wings to those poor wayward covers that other people didn't like and it just turned into this is how I spend several mornings a week over my coffee I just put up new book cover designs or new pinnables uh, you know new uh, covers for Facebook or Twitter all these graphics I put these up here uh, to get this stuff um, you know for for hard-working authors and people who don't frankly want to be ripped off I have spent good money on products and services that just haven't worked out well now if I can get control of my cursor again <laughs> well, 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 to get control of your cursor again um, <laughs> that is is very true because I I came online in 2008 at the end of 2008 and yeah if there was just people you know just navigate those shark infested waters to the right people and <laughs> save you so much so much yeah well part of the problem is you have to know the questions to ask the designers that you want to hire and I I can't tell you how many authors I've helped undo the damage of, of poor book covers or poor formatting or even bad website design for that matter we were talking about that earlier and you know making money as a writer is very very doable that's what this that's what this Kindle uh, event is all about we we all know with persistence and you know if you have stories to tell if you have information to share and if you're passionate about creating content Kindle books are just the way to go I, I can't even I'm so amazed at how far we've come but there are bumps along the way and the learning curve to getting the right formatting and covers and marketing it's so so difficult and many people give up too soon and my hope is that with Book Cover Junction uh, along with the other great experts on this panel we're all here to help one another and other authors out there really make the most of every ebook they have in them yes because I remember in the course that I took with Devorah Lansky when I was acting like I was a VA because <laughs> I'm not a VA. <laughs> I keep trying to make sure everybody knows that. Um, but back off of me, um, the whole thing is I remember the overwhelm that I thought some of the authors would feel. Like you said, WordPress websites not looking right, horrible. <laughs> and I talk about a stickler boy when I. I see a WordPress website, and I just kind of—if it's not a certain way—I just kind of, kind of have a thought about, oh, okay, I wonder. And then, then when you check out their price or what they paid for it, then you really feel bad because it's not properly set up, either search engine optimized correctly or just branded for that author, let alone the other social media profiles that they're going to be working on to help promote and the, uh, you know, their book as outlets as I went on my tangent. <laughs> no, I mean you're right. It, this is all about we're talking about book covers and it, and the over the overriding emphasis here is design. And yeah. it it comes across. Your it starts with your book cover. It often starts with your title that's well displayed on your book cover. The other thing, you know, and I want to show you guys one other really cool trick. I told you that there were a couple of tricks. This is a trick that that you need to take advantage of uh, I'm opening up now my Kindle uh, direct publishing bookshelf so once you have a book in you um, this is what you're gonna wanna do is if you haven't already you use your Amazon login and you create your Kindle account and and you list your books you start getting your books in here and and these several of these are in draft mode and again I know the the, the fonts really small I'm looking I'm looking at the Google display while I'm looking at my own you might be able to hit um, shift and then kind of um, push the mouse 
little wheel on the mouse up a little bit, and it should make it a little bit bigger. That's it's either shift or, or control. Can, I can never remember which one it is. Let's see if I can make. I think it's I made control. It. There, yeah, it's control. Okay, so what I'm going to do right now is I've got a demo book loaded in here, and I do this just to check my covers because keep in mind the cover that you see, and I'll just I'll click on uh, one of these here. Actually, let me click on one of the ones I put up today. Oh, the moon one. The moon one. <laughs> we'll take a look at the moon one, the moon one. Like so this, this shows you the four designs that come in this E cover pack and you'll notice this one on the left is where we tend to look at stuff. But on the right is closer to the thumbnails that we see. And what you're seeing is slightly smaller but I want to show you this trick. So if you go to your Kindle uh, publishing bookshelf and you just create a demo book, all you do is just title it demo or cover test or something like that. Down at the bottom here is this cover uploader and what I do for all of these designs before they make it onto the page for you to download is I upload them. I do a cover test so I'm gonna browse for an image right now and grab my latest cover test which may in fact be what you're looking at here. I'm gonna upload this and again, this is a great trick. Whether you're doing your own covers, you're having somebody do your covers, I would suggest when you're checking your art before you actually hit the publish button that you just take a moment to double check and make sure that the cover that you're about to release to the public looks the way you want it to. Now, I don't think I saw a change, which means my cover is probably the one that I was working on. So let's try this one here. We're just gonna, I'm just gonna save this as a JPEG because Kindle likes JPEGs for their covers. I'm gonna make this a cover test and replace the cover test I have on my desktop. Whoops, clicking too quickly. Browse once more and upload the image. And in just a second you'll see the cover on the left, the thumbnail will change. And this is actually uh, what you saw beforehand was a font style I rejected because it couldn't be read. Now let me give you a sense of what that look like uh, in the size that you would see. Whoops. Why did it do? Making my making me crazy. So that's a little closer to what you would actually see. And you can read the title, you can read the author's name, and that's what's really important is to double check your covers that they do that. So I did that right through my Kindle direct publishing bookshelf, which you can have. So that's pretty much, unless there are questions, that's what I have for you. I want to invite you all to join Book Cover Junction and I can go back to the sales page and to the very important link. We'll start with that. What do you say? Yeah, the very important link. <laughs> so uh, this is important for two reasons. Number one, Eleanor has been nice enough to put this event on. But the second reason this is important is if you use this link, you're going to get a discount on the professional level membership and I'm just gonna tell you up front there are two very simple upsells after you make a purchase and I'll show you right now what those are so that you know going into it without there being any kind of confusion so here's the URL once again and this will take you to a special page that's exclusively for the Kendall experts panel guests and friends of Eleanor Pryor and if I scroll down the normal price for the advanced monthly membership is $19.97. But you can get the professional monthly membership for less. It's two cents less, but that's less. It's normally $29.97. So it's more than $10 off. And remember, this is access to everything on the site. The ebook covers, we didn't talk about them, the pinnable graphics, the web graphics. You can go on your own and look at bookcoverjunction.com. 
Um, but this is for personal use as well as client use. It's the suggestion box and daily customization. Now, I have a strange weekend. I take Tuesdays and Wednesdays off, so I don't answer those questions on Tuesdays and Wednesdays. But other than that, I'm available. Once you make a purchase, you'll get to another page with my cute little wowsy yowza cow. You can lock in at the special monthly pro rate which is that 1995. If you lock in at that rate, that's good for life. As long as you're a member, you will not pay more than that. But if you want to save even more, you can buy your first month at that discounted price and then upgrade to the three months pro for $47. That's like getting almost a whole month for free. This is a $42 savings every three months over the normal price. So that's one option. If you just know you're going to want to have all this stuff and not worry about paying again, you can upgrade to Lifetime Pro for $2.99 and never make another payment. So you can buy in at any level. You have that for 30 days, and then you roll over to Lifetime Pro if you take this upgrade. So those are the offers that I have just for you, people who are coming to this webinar on your behalf. Thank you. I have questions again. Oh, please. This, besides the fact that this is amazing, Dill, I, I love Pinterest, so um, would you mind showing this some of your absolutely not no and, I would love to do that and um, I mean with Pinterest there's so many fun things that you can do like you can create a board for uh, you know for your books um, what else can we do <laughs> you know <laughs> so, I, I love to use Pinterest uh, you know you're talking about you use PicMonkey all the time for your web blog posts I have different boards for my blogs I'll put you know obviously the covers that I create go on a Pinterest board I have boards for some of my blogs uh, whenever I do here's here's a uh, going back to Memorial Day here's a graphic oh actually this was Father's Day so here's a graphic I made for Father's Day and because I like variety, these pinnable packs come with three choices. So you have this choice, and they're all the same size. This is just for purposes of the page. And each of these can be customized. You can put whatever message you want. And I always suggest, you know this, Eleanor, you brand. You, go, you take this to PicMonkey and you drop your URL in the corner. So when you go to uh, put this up at Pinterest or you share it on Facebook, uh, you know, you've got that branding there. So the whole section, yeah, let me go back to the home page. So right below the covers, you're going to see some of the newer website graphics and pinnables. And let me pull up another one here. This is another pinnable graphic. And again, three options. So saying by Marilyn Monroe, sometimes good things fall apart so better things can fall together. And if you like the background, but you have a great saying or uh, statement or something else, or you just like the image, again, because these are delivered as PSD files and as JPEGs, you can either uh, change the layered files yourself, add to the JPEG at PicMonkey, or, again, put in a support ticket and say, hey, I want a customization on this particular pinnable called Better Things. And that comes to me, and I take care of it for you. And then magically, you get a message from me saying, hey, go to this link and pick up your stuff. I had myself on mute there. Yeah, and you know what else I also just thought of that would be fun for those pinnable images? Um, for you, if you have a Tumblr blog, too, you can Absolutely. use Absolutely. Absolutely. Instagram. So it would be really great for your book covers and, and all that other good stuff. So and it's all done. Yeah, Not it's so all inclusive. Love that. Yeah. That is great. So that is an amazing offer, and it totally will take out your guesswork. You not it just takes out so many of the things that you have to worry about. You know, the back and forth between a designer if you don't like something that that's eliminated because it's pretty much there. You just go in, you choose your four, and you go. Yeah, and it's it, the nice thing is uh, this: the same stuff works. I mean, there are a lot of people who create products or giveaways who are also authors. So if you've got a PDF giveaway on your website, 
these covers work for those as well. You drop those right into your 8.5 by 11 you know, document that you're going to PDF. You drop those covers. You can drop the pinnables. Any of the graphics here are free to use through the membership, either for personal use at the basic or advanced level or for personal or client use at the pro level. I've used a ton of these images for clients who are trying to start their online presence. They're giving away snippets of their books. So we'll put in some graphics. We'll promo the book cover. Uh, we'll start to get some buzz. I have other people who are writers who part of their website, you know, when you, when you start to create that platform, there are two types of people who visit you, your fans and the people who want to be writers like you are. And so some people in their blogs are writing to the people who want to be writers. So they're giving instruction, character analysis, how to research a nonfiction topic. Those are great giveaway items. And the other thing that Book Cover Junction does is it allows you to get the graphics you need for things that you just want to get done quickly, even more quickly than a book. You can cruise Book Cover Junction. If you don't see what you need, what do you do? Suggestion box. <laughs> Suggestion box, exactly. The pro level members, you can create uh, content by just giving me your suggestions. And I actually, I got to tell you, I love it when I get suggestions because I have to be careful. I don't just get crazy and design covers I want to write books for. Right. Yes, because then you have the topics that are just suited for you if you did that. So this is great because there's so many different topics out there and the suggestions coming in and it, it saves a lot of time. I do know when I wrote my um, when I wrote my book, trying to figure out the cover, this would have saved me a lot of time. Oh fantastic. That's I love to hear that. That's my that's one of the things that I want. I the problem is is that I've know I've noticed with many authors what ends up happening is you get so focused, as you should be, on the writing and the editing and the polishing. And by the time you get to that little box on Amazon where you're putting in your details and you're putting up your file, when you get to that cover box and that's the only thing standing between you and that publish button, it is so easy to just take a template or something that isn't as solid as the content within just to get it up there. I mean, how excited do you get knowing I can push this button and my my ebook will probably be for sale in the next 24 hours who wants to wait on a cover yeah. and yeah, it's, exactly yeah it's tough so my hope is you go hey I can find what I need do some fun tweaks within my skill set or have Sean do them for me and by the time you're ready to press press that button to upload your cover it's already on your hard drive and you're as in love with that cover as you are with the content of the book that you created. And that's the, that's the thing. It shouldn't be one foot on this side of the fence and one foot on the other side of, oh, I love the content. However, I kind of just i am okay in love with the book cover just because I settled because I wanted the book up. So, yeah, this, I can see how this would be a great benefit to, to, to everyone. Yeah, and I try and cover a variety of fiction and nonfiction. I try and hit a lot of different genres. Um, you know, everything from email marketing to westerns to science fiction to books you can use or covers you can use for thrillers. But again, the beauty of the designs is many of them are so versatile. What might be listed as a category of mystery, if you flop out an image and put something else in, it could just as easily be a cookbook. Right. Definitely. Okay, well, <laughs> I don't have any other, can you believe it? I don't have any other questions for you. <laughs> but um, before, go ahead and uh, stop screen share and come back to us. There you Hi. go. Hi. <laughs> so this has been Sean Hansen hanging out with me. She is one of eight Kindle experts that are showing you eight different ways to make money with Kindle publishing and in order to make money with Kindle publishing you have to have an amazing book cover that grabs somebody's attention and pulls them in to want to look at your book and purchase your book on Kindle. So you saw the amazing offer that she has for you with uh, bookcoverjunction.com. Just go to eleanorloves.com forward slash Sean and 
I hope that you will join us for the rest of our other speakers. We have some other great content coming up and, and enjoy your kind of my journey too, learning more about Kindle and getting excited. So, go so ahead. I want to I want to thank you, Eleanor, for having me, and uh, I'm looking forward to the rest of the presenters. It's a great lineup. I am so thrilled to be included in this group, and I do want to just remind everybody, you can go directly to bookcoverjunction.com, but if you do that, you will not get the special webinar pricing. So make, that page is hidden. These are only for invites from Eleanor and the other guests, so make sure you go to eleanorloves.com forward slash Sean, S-H-A-W-N, to get that special pricing. And if something happens and you forget that link, contact Eleanor or myself. Okay. We'd be happy to give that to you. Definitely, and I almost forgot. I know that you can't possibly, everybody's schedule is different, and you may not, even though the speakers are available for 48 hours to watch their replay, you may miss some of them. Some of them. As I said, her. But however, we have a special pricing going on from the time that the event starts until the last speaker session is taken down. You can get all of the speaker sessions for the price of forty-seven dollars, along with an added PDF talking um, with their best strategy for Kindle. So make sure you go and grab the recording so that you can refer back to them at any point in time that you like. And we just like to say thanks for hanging out with us today and. Sean, thanks for hanging out with me. So Sean and I are saying see you later until Bye, the next Bye, everybody. Weekend.